On this week's political figure episode, we got the California queen of condescension. And I do mean that in the absolute best way possible. Miss Katie Porter. Miss Porter was born January 3rd, 1974 in Fort Dodge, Iowa. Growing up on a farm in Southern Iowa, her father was a farmer and her mom was the founder of Fawns and Porter Love of Quilting, which is a magazine and television program about quilting. Now I, a proud Minnesotan, can confidently say that that upbringing is some of the most Midwest shit I've ever heard of in my life. Being brought into this world in the middle of a bitter Iowa winter with a solid Midwest upbringing would teach her to be an ice queen with a Mr. Miyagi level mastery of the passive aggressive arts. But don't let that humble Iowa farm girl facade fool ya. She would end up graduating high school from Phillips Prep in Andover, Massachusetts. And what may have she been prepping for? Fucking Yale, cause she's a Banff. Well, at Yale, she majored in American Studies. And if you know anything about Katie Porter, you're gonna find this really surprising. Cause during this time, she interned for Iowa Kripke, uh, Senator Chuck Grassley. But even after completing her undergrad from Yale, Katie still wasn't quite satisfied with her resume's ability to dick slap the patriarchy. But how do you one-up your own education street cred when you already got a degree from Yale hanging on the wall. You put a Juris Doctor from Harvard Law next to it. Duh. Oh, and obviously make sure you got that magnum cum laude asterisk to go underneath it. Well, at Harvard, she studied bankruptcy law under future Senator Elizabeth Warren, a woman who she would eventually name her daughter after. After college, she went on and clerked for Judge Richard Arnold of the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals in Little Rock, Arkansas. Then after that, went to Portland, Oregon to practice with the Stoll Rives Law Firm and was a project director for the National Conference of Bankruptcy Judges. She'd then go on to teach law at the University of Nevada School of Law and the University of Iowa College of Law and then the University of California Irvine School of Law. And in all of her spare time, she wrote a fucking textbook on modern consumer law. In 2012, California's Attorney General and future Vice President Kamala Harris appointed Porter to be the state's independent monitor of banks in a $25 billion mortgage settlement. In 2018, Katie decided to run for California's 45th Congressional District. And now I know a lot of people just assume that California is just one giant liberal, socialist, Marxist, communist, hippie commune. So it may surprise you to learn that there is more Republican in California than there is in Texas. And many of California's districts are very solidly red. So solidly red that the district that is now California's 45th has never had a Democratic representative since its inception in 1953. That is, of course, until Katie Porter walked up to 45th's previous representative, Mimi Walters, like the lunchroom bully, and said, hey, bitch, you're in my seat. And add to just how impressive winning this bright red congressional seat was, she did it with absolutely no corporate PAC money. She was endorsed by one PAC, however, the PAC to end Citizens United. For those of you who don't know, Citizens United is what made PACs possible. So not only did she take California's 45th, like she was an Englishman and it was some other culture's historically significant artifact, but she did it without writing a single IOU to corporate donors. And as she sat on her throne, like the Fresh Prince of California's 45th, and started an unofficial television show on C-SPAN called Professor Porter pummels the patriarchy. Like, as soon as she got the job, she just burst into congressional meetings with a literal whiteboard to take a bunch of old crusty fucks to school. Not only does she go into these hearings with the intention of condescendingly making these people look like a fucking idiot, she does it with such masterful Midwestern passive aggressiveness that she forces them to help her make them look like idiots. In addition to using her whiteboard to balance things that bank CEOs say they can't balance to prove to them that they should be able to balance shit that she could literally balance on a fucking whiteboard and using it to demonstrate how a pharmaceutical CEO tripled the price of cancer drugs to do nothing more than increase his own salary and corporate profits to his face on national television. She also uses other props. Like one time she used bags of rice and M&Ms to demonstrate the hypocrisy of corporate spending from big oil companies to the CEOs of those oil companies like they were fucking toddlers. She brought her own Jeopardy board to a congressional hearing and then she used it to make ranking members members of the Department of Defense pick categories to answer questions in the form of a question about how incompetent they are at their fucking jobs. And they fucking did it. Like, I want you to take a moment to appreciate that. A Karen-looking middle-aged mom from Iowa sat in front of some of the highest-ranking members in the Department of Defense for the most powerful country on the planet and told them to play a game show-style game where they had to answer questions in the form of a question about how much they suck at their own jobs.
and they fucking did it. I am pretty proud of my ability to come up with analogies, and I cannot even come close to fathoming an analogy that really does justice to the boss level of baller energy of that moment. But she doesn't need props to own these idiots. Using nothing but words, she made Louis DeJoy, Donald Trump's highly incompetent and unqualified postmaster general, admit in his own voice, out loud, with his own words, that he has no idea how the post office works. He said out loud he has really no idea how much stamps cost or how much it costs to mail a postcard or an envelope or how the mail-in voting system works it's not always so direct she's also shown that she can throw enough passive aggressive shade to reverse global warming without saying a word during kevin mccarthy's confirmation hearings where the republicans were wasting a bunch of time and money with their clown show showing that they were so incompetent they couldn't do something as simple as selecting a speaker of the house halfway through this painfully drawn out process she showed up in a bright orange shirt and sat there reading a bright orange book titled The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. She's also got some other impressive accomplishments. It took her five minutes to convince the chief of the CDC to make COVID testing free for all Americans. She also authored the Help America Run Act and got it passed the House. The bill would have allowed candidates running for the House or Senate to use campaign funds to pay uh, health insurance premiums, child care, elder care, all in an effort to make it easier for regular Americans to run for public office. Unfortunately, that bill was never taken up by the Senate. Speaking of the Senate, She's running for Senate to replace Dianne Feinstein. And if you live in California, you should fucking vote for her. She is a 49-year-old Gen Xer who has made herself a political powerhouse out of sheer willpower alone. She's smart, she's tough, she's aggressive, and she's got a conscience, and she's not owned by corporate lobbyists. She could very well be our next Teddy Roosevelt. You know, minus the penis and imperialism. So California, you are lucky to have her, and the country needs her. So please make sure in 2024 that she is your new senator.